get right into, as it is almost 9.30, our Ask the Lawyer segment of the week with Bruce L. Shiner, attorney for the injured. If you've submitted a question previously for Bruce, maybe today's the day you get an answer. And if you'd like to submit a question, I'll tell you how to go about that coming up in just a quick moment. First, though, would you please help me welcome Bruce L. Shiner, attorney for the injured. Good morning, Bruce. How you doing today? I'm doing very well. All right. Um, enjoying the summer. Yeah. Sounds like you're on the road. I- I'm sure you've got somebody else driving. I know you. You would give all your concentration to uh, the question at hand. Well, I pulled over so we could... Oh, even better. ...chat being undisturbed. That's that's terrific, and that's always a smart thing to do. Uh, maybe avoid problems like the one has befallen somebody in today's question, which I'm going to get right into. Are you ready? I'm ready, Todd. Okay, here's what our email says today. It says, my daughter was vacationing in Sarasota and rented an e-scooter with some friends. While she was crossing in the crosswalk with the light in her favor, a car took a right turn and struck her. She was taken to the hospital with a broken arm and leg. She will need surgery and a lot of physical therapy. The at-fault driver didn't have insurance. We have full coverage on our cars, including uninsured motorist coverage. I read an article that said e-scooters aren't considered vehicles, so I'm worried our car insurance won't help. Can you ask your lawyer friend? Um... And when it comes to something like e-scooters, Bruce, I mean, this is all very modern, current technology. Is the law keeping up with the descriptions and the and and that kind of thing? Well, I, I think the law is keeping up with it, but unfortunately, the drivers aren't keeping up with it because the e-scooters are a new phenomenon, and you see people shooting in and out, and it gets pretty dangerous. It's, mm-hmm. it's like a a motorcycle or a bicycle, but it's even worse because you don't expect someone on an e-scooter to be in the street. So what um, recourse is there here? Is it something with them having uninsured motorist coverage they could maybe count on their insurance company? Well, Todd, I could tell you're well-schooled in uninsured motorist coverage. (laughs) Thanks to you, yes. It starts before uninsured motorist coverage because a person on an e-scooter scooter is considered to be a pedestrian. Oh. And a pedestrian is entitled to recover personal injury protection benefits, which pay up to $10,000 of the medical bills. Mm-hmm. In, in, in this particular case, it doesn't seem like $10,000 will go very far. No. But it's a, it's a good start. So, first of all, the poor victim is entitled to collect under their car insurance for PIP benefits, personal injury protection benefits, they pay 80% up to $10,000. Okay. And and yes, you're 100% on the money. Uninsured motorist benefits will come into play. Hopefully they have high limits and hopefully they chose the stacking form of uninsured motorist coverage. As in every case with a significant or substantial injury, this person should immediately contact the lawyer. You know, there's a lot at stake. Absolutely. You know, and, and you've taught me, you've schooled me well when it comes to the ways of insurance companies, too. I can see this being the kind of thing that insurance company would try to say, an e-scooter, oh, that's not covered for one reason or another. But you've just set the record straight that that's not true. That is correct. Likely going to need a professional to get through all of this, and the sooner the better, like Bruce says. Terrific news, Bruce. Thank you so much for helping out again this morning. Well, it's great talking to you, Todd, and I look forward to another challenging question next week. As do we, sir. In the meantime, say hi to everybody and have a good week. Thank you. Bye-bye, Bruce. Let's give it up again for Bruce L. Shiner, attorney for the injured. Now, if you would like to submit a question... For future consideration, uh, pretty straightforward stuff. You just go to our website. There's a keyword search box there. You put Bruce as the keyword in that box. Take you right where you need to go. If you are in a jam like we've just heard about, however, though, I wouldn't go that route. I would call the Port Charlotte office of Associates and Bruce L. Shiner directly and quickly. Here's the phone number. 941-743-7777. As is often the case in these conversations, Bruce always emphasizes you need to move quickly on these things. Time is working against you, so to speak. So call 941-743-7777.
Tell him the Todd Matthews sent you from Kicks Country 92.9.